Today, I want to talk to you about an issue that seems to affect all people who try to be creative in any field, whether you're a songwriter or a filmmaker or an artist or writer, which is, in the end, why are you doing this? What's the purpose? What's the reward? Why are, why are you bothering? When you sit down to work, who's there with you? Your dad, who thinks that you should get a real job? Or your fifth grade art teacher who told you you should probably focus on something else like math or home economics? Your brother who says you can't still be serious about all the art stuff? Or maybe the issue isn't the people who tell you not to make art at all. Perhaps it's the well-meaning people who um, are really eager to suggest some super important changes that you should make just so you can get real success. The friend who says that you should try writing something that's more like the current bestseller. Or the co-worker who says, you know, you should really paint kittens because people love kittens. Or the commenter on your blog who tells you that, that they like the stuff that you used to write so much more. Or the neighbor who tells you all the things that she's heard that you should do to make money from your hobby, like get on TikTok or do more on Instagram or self-publish a book or start a newsletter, open an Etsy store, design some t-shirts, I don't know. Or maybe it's a person who doesn't really even exist, like the critics or the audience, or maybe it's somebody else's audience, or what you think that someone successful is doing just to get their audience. Or maybe it's just they. They say they want. But most likely of all, the person who's there is a voice in your head, a voice who critiques uh, and questions what you're trying to do. That, that monkey in your head who wants to get you to, to stop taking risks and to start being sensible. You know, who tells you that you're not an artist and you, you never will be. All right, well, here's the thing. Being creative, whether you're a writer or a painter or a baker or a video maker, it pays enormous dividends. Every time you do what you love, you are getting an enormous payoff. And that payoff won't be in money necessarily. It won't be in applause or in likes or in comments or in thumbs up or in subscribers. The reward is what happens inside you. When you feel whole and free and happy and you, the real you. But when all those other people are crammed into your workspace, you get shoved into a corner, and that's a lot less rewarding. You're no longer making what you think is cool. You're making what you think others will think is cool or worthwhile or unique or full of potential to make gazillions of spondulics. And when these people get to be the arbiter of the value of what you're making, then the true audience for your work gets gypped and won't end up getting what they want and need. So who is that true audience? Well, it's pretty small. It's one person. It's you. All right. However, there's an interesting paradox that occurs when you follow your passion instead of listening to all those people. The more you make stuff just for you, the better you get at making the stuff you really love. You put in the time and you sweat to, to refine it. You experiment with ways to improve it. You get closer and closer to blowing yourself away with your own creation. You do this hard work that no one else is probably going to pay you to do. And all of this improvement makes you more and more self-assured and more rewarded by what you're doing. You make the perfect chicken cacciatore. You write the, the perfect folk song about pickup trucks. You knit that perfect, snuggly, comfy, gorgeous lemon yellow sweater covered with hot pink dancing hippos. Are these things for everyone? No. Most people don't want yellow sweaters with pink hippos or songs about F-150s. But some people do. Some people really do. And they would love to find someone who not only made something that fits their passion, but made it really well because they were willing to to throw themselves into it, to polish their skills, and to, to make something truly awesomely amazing. And 
Another awesome thing about the internet is that you can connect with other hippo sweater lovers and truck folk song fans. Even if they live thousands of miles away and they only speak Mandarin or Croatian, and there will probably turn out to be a way huger number of those folks than you think. And so many that it's going to blow your mind. When I started making sketchbook art and illustrated journaling, I didn't know anyone else who thought that this was a thing. And eventually I found a small number of people who liked it too. And then I wrote some books about sketchbooks and I started blogging about it and making videos on the old YouTube and Soon I found hundreds of thousands of people who felt exactly about sketchbooks as I did. Hundreds of thousands of sketchbook maniacs. Who'd have thunk it? All those maniacs connected with what I was making. Not because I was making it for them, because I was making it for me. I'd never been able to find books or blogs or videos about the stuff that I cared about, so I had to make it myself. And I made it just the way I wanted it to, to be in my imagination. And I protected its authenticity from all those geniuses who would come along and say, make a few tweaks to make it more marketable or more popular or more commercial or whatever they thought was important. But I had a simple benchmark. Would I pick up this book in a bookstore? Would I subscribe to this newsletter? Would I click to watch this video? Did it seem cool to me? And if you keep it authentic that way, you're building it for this tiny niche. And it's so tiny that you think that only you occupy it. You're the only sketchbook nerd, the only catchatory geek, the only pink hippo maniac, the one in a million. But when you divide the billions of people who are on the internet by one in a million, you get a whole lot of truck-loving folkies. You get a whole lot of d d players and deadheads and vinyl collectors and luge fanatics and dorks of every super weird description. Enough to let you make a viable living doing just what you love. Even if your dad or your art teacher or your neighbor with the stuffed deer head collection doesn't get at all what you're on about. So do this. Make stuff that you want to make. And keep making it so you get past the hard part of learning to make decent stuff, the part where you suck because it's new and you don't have the skills yet. Because you will get those skills so long as you keep on plugging away up there in your little room, long after everyone else has gone to bed or gone to the bar to watch the game. And soon, you'll be really good at doing this thing that no one else really seems to care about. And then... Trust me on this. Our friends at Google, they'll find you and they'll connect you with all of the other people who care just as much about your geeky corner as you do. And they'll become your fans and you'll be the rock star that you deserve to be. And there's one other option. Don't be a rock star. Forget the audience. Stay in your garage or your back bedroom or your little kitchen and keep doing what you do. And don't worry about sharing it. That's an absolutely okay decision too. Make it just for you and no one else. Don't share it or post it or Instagram it or whatever it. Don't worry about making a living from it or even spare change. Just keep doing it anyway. Do it because you love it. And all the other things that I've already said before are still going to apply to you. You'll get better and better at it. And the voices in your head that have been haranguing you fade away from under this joy that's swelling your heart because you're being true to you. As I say all of this to you, there may be a voice in your head that's telling you, I'm an idiot, or what I'm saying doesn't really apply to you, that you're not good enough, you never will be, that it would be a huge waste to put any more effort or time or money into your passion, or that following your obsession is selfish. Instead, you should be cooking dinner for the kids or mowing the lawn or grooming the schnauzer or working overtime or just watching more inane YouTube videos. That voice is getting scared by what it's hearing here. But remember, that voice isn't you. Listen to you instead, to what you truly want. Live a life full of passion. Maybe obscure passion, 
but passion nonetheless. It's really that simple. Do what you love. Do you. Thanks for watching this. I hope it was helpful. And here are a few other easy things that you can do to support your creativity, okay? One, subscribe to this channel and then you'll know the next time that I make a video. And two, get my newsletter. I write an essay every Friday that's kind of like this video, only in words, in an email. And people seem to like getting it, maybe because it's free. And three, watch another video.